Okay, so today we're going to talk about the Reliance ProTran 2 transfer switch. So if you've got a portable gas generator and you're looking for a way to hook it to the house, run some circuits, you've come to the right place. All right, this is a great way to do it. Now you could just do a lockout on your main panel or a single transfer okay, switch. So why is this better than just using a lockout on your main panel? It's because this system allows you to run two sources of power at the same time. All right, so if you just have a backup gasoline generator, then that's not going to help because you're not going to want to run your backup generator and the utility at the same time. But if your backup source is a solar portable generator or battery backed solar for your house, then you're basically generating free power all day long and this is a way you can run it into your house. So you could have some things on the utility while that's up and then at the same time you could switch a couple of circuits over to your backup solar generator. Just as much, uh, depending on how big your generator is, you switch just as much as it'll power. And you can turn these things on and off throughout the day. So this is a great way to take advantage of all that free power you're generating off your own panels even while you're on the utility. You can't do that with a lockout. Anyway, let's get started. So the plan is to back up this sub panel that powers my prepper room and garage with this transfer switch. So it's probably going to go somewhere in here to be recessed into the wall. The wires will go through the wall and into this panel. So the idea is that uh, this panel will be powered by the utility and by my solar as the backup. So in your case you might have a generator backing it up. Alright, so how do I get that secondary power in here? Uh, if you're doing a generator, you probably just go down the wall and put a plug on the outside. In my case, I'm going to go up through this wall, into the attic, over to my solar power system. I'll use a 6-3 wire. It'll be a little overkill in case I expand later. Uh, and it'll go into this panel here. So I'll put a 30 amp double breaker here. Uh, these are already two transfer switches uh, in the house. For my main panels. I'll show you a picture of that. Did those five years ago. So we're just going to add another transfer switch off of this. Alright, so let's Okay, so start. I want to show you the breakers that this comes with. Alright, so it comes with a double 20 and then single 15, 15, 15, 15. Alright, but the box is actually rated for 30s and 20s. So I could replace this with a 30, I could replace these with 20s. All right, but the entire box is still limited to 30 amps because of this input wire. All right, but we can change these out. Also, the switch, this one is a double. So it's tied together with this little bar. You can twist this out of here. Where's it going? It's coming out this side. So it'll come out of there. And you can make it two singles. All right, and then you'd have to put two single breakers in here. But for me, I'm going to keep this a double, and I'm going to replace this with a 30 amp because I'm going to use this as a car electric car charger at 30 amps. And I'm going to keep these at 15. I'm going to put a 20 in here for my Harvest Right freeze dryer. All right, so let's change those out. All right, so I'm taking out the 20 and I'm putting in a 30. go that one's done out out and 20 20 let's put the wires back in we're good to go okay so the box is going to go here the wires are going to come down out of the box Go through a 2x4 stud and up into this box. So I'm going to cut a hole like right here. I like to cut big holes here because I'm not worried about fixing it. 
it's really easy. And then I'm going to cut a pretty big hole right here. So that way I'll be able to get in there and drill through the wall and pull everything through. The only thing i got to watch out for is this wire is back in here so I can't hit that. I don't think there's anything in the wall here but I'll be careful. The other thing is I'm not going to cut straight in like this. I'm going to cut it like, a, like you're cutting a pumpkin lid, you know, so that you can drop it back in there and it'll be easy to patch it up. Okay guys, so I didn't film all this, but um, I just went ahead and cut some more holes in the wall. Had to drill through some fire blocking, drilled through the two top plates, and you can see where I pulled that 6-3 wire down through the wall. It comes out right here. This is what's going to power the transfer switch. Um, in my case, it goes up through the attic over here to this uh, battery-backed solar. See the wire comes down here, and it'll come up into a 30-amp double-pole breaker right here. So that is my backup power that runs over here into my transfer switch. In your case, it'll probably be uh, a generator. So you'll have a plug on the outside wall of your garage probably run a 30 amp wire like 10 gauge and bring it up into here so that's what you'll hook up uh, then next we'll we'll get the switch in here and hook all that up then the wires come out the bottom they go through the stud wall here this will be in conduit come up through here and then I can wire it all up so let's get that Okay, so next I'm going to tie up our input wire here from the solar to the transfer switch. So we're just going to go red to red, black to black. The ground and the common, I'm going to float these. They're not going to be connected. And that's because in my case, they're already connected at the main panel. So I don't want to create a ground loop. But with your generator, you might, uh, in most cases, you're going to connect these up. Okay, so I've got my inputs connected. In my case, it's solar. In your case, it's your generator. But those are connected up. So now, I'm gonna hook up the other end. So in my case, it's the solar power. I'm gonna put a 30 amp breaker right in here. Bam! 30. Okay, so this is my backup source. 30 amps off of my battery backed solar. I'm using the 6.3, which is way overkill. That runs up through the attic and over to my transfer switch. So now, if I throw that 30 amp breaker, we're going to have power up to here. But I'm not going to do that yet because I want to get all my wires up into the box and wire that up. So let's do that next. First thing I did was I went in here and I picked out which circuits I want to put on the transfer switch and labeled them, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F. And a couple of important things is the A, B is the heaviest wiring on the transfer switch so that's where I put this car charger which will be 30 amps. Um, the others will be 20s and here you want to try and balance your loads so if you can think about what's on here and what you're usually using uh, you want to you don't want all your power going on one side on one leg so I divided it up in a way that I think it'll be balanced. Alright so the next thing I'm going to do is pull all the wiring up through here and first thing we'll do is hook up the uh, ground and the common. So I've got a red C wire and I got a black C wire. And I got a C breaker here and I got a C breaker over here. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the circuit wire out. This happens to be the lights for my garage. Take that circuit wire out and I'm going to put this red power wire into C. All right. What that does is it brings the power from that breaker over here to the switch. We also have 
power from this breaker from the generator and the switch will determine which power is used. Well, you in the down position it will use the utility and the up position it will use the generator. That power comes out of that switch and goes into, I'll tie it into the original circuit wire here. Okay, So red wire comes out, power goes over to here, we also have power from the generator, the switch determines which way, which one you're going to use, the output comes through the black wire which ties to the original circuit. And that's how it works. Alright, so let's go ahead and do that. Just going to loosen this up, pull the circuit wire out, set it aside, take our red wire, C. Kind of get it behind some things here. And put it right into the C breaker. Alright, then we'll take our C black wire and run it up to the original. This is the wire that was in the C breaker. That's our circuit wire. And we're just going to twist those up a little bit and put a nut on it. There we go. And I go ahead and tape them up. Go tape it up and that circuit's done. Okay, so I've got it all wired up. All the red wires come in with the associated letters A, B, C, D, E, and F. All the red wires and then all the black wires are with the corresponding circuits. So I've got six circuits running. Everything is hooked up. So now I'm going to switch on the power to this panel and switch on the main and then I'll go through one at a time on utility and then we'll go through them one at a time on solar and then we'll mix and match and make sure there are no issues. Okay, so I think I'll start with the solar. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the power on. All right, now that puts 240 volts over here into this transfer switch on the backup side. The uh, utility power is still off. All right, so now I switch on the E circuit and switch it to the generator. Oh, there you go. Lights. All right, well, that's all running. Let's see if we can get the lights on, right? So that would be D. Yep, it's lights running off okay, solar. Okay, so my battery on my camera died, but I went ahead and tested all the circuits on the solar side. And I added this uh, tape, so basically black means it's on leg one and red means it's on leg two and white is, means it's on both legs. That just helps me balance the loads out easier. Uh, and I labeled everything. So everything works so far. Next step is to turn on this panel with the utility power. And I'll start by switching all this stuff off. Turn these off, oh. and then we'll do one at a time. So let's do that. Okay, so I've switched on the power to this panel, and I switched on the main breaker. All the other breakers are off, and we're just going to do one at a time. Right now, uh, this does have power from my solar right now, so it is powered from that. And when I start switching these on, it'll be powered from the utility at the same time. So let's go ahead and switch on D which is the lights in this room and then if I drop this yeah, there we go we got lights so that works now let's switch that off put our breaker on from the solar and switch on the lights yeah we already know that works okay so right now this switch right here for the lights in this room is powered by the solar or your generator and uh, the utility so I can switch it either way all right let's try another one let's go to what's on E plugs in this room okay so now that 
turn on these plugs, which I got some lights in there. We got the freezer and the air conditioner. So yeah, that works. And I change it, but I don't want to short cycle my freezer. So I'm going to leave that off, but I can turn that on. Uh, this is for the freeze dryer. That's not hooked up yet. So I got to finish that plug and stuff, but um, garage lights. C. All right. We'll do C. I'll go check that. Um, the A, B. That's for the car charger. So I'll have to go check that with a meter. So, so far, so good. I think that's everything on here except for the freeze dryer. All right. So now the next thing is to make sure that it works with the regular circuits as well. So you got to turn those on. That's the air conditioner and the heater. All right. So it looks like it's working good. So the next thing I'm going to do is just button everything up, um, put these panels back in. and it, it looks like it's messed up, but really that's so easy to fix. Maybe I'll show you that real quick. All right, guys. So... I'm going to take the old piece that I cut out of here. Remember we did the pumpkin cut. So now I can just put it right in. It'll stay there. I'm using like a really old uh, spackle here. <laughs> so we'll see how this works. But basically, and you just putty it right in. I might have to go over this one more coat, but I'll get one on here for now. Look at that. Just about gone. That's without paint. All right, guys, I got this all done. I just need another coat of paint and a little trim, and it's all set to go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.